You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. And you can't find a fighter, but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out. Move mountains, we gon' walk it out and move. Silence is a quiet, and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe. And I know you feel like dying, but I promise we would take the world to its feet. Move, my mountains, bring it to its feet. That we have each other. Stone from GMHC. I would like to begin this World AIDS Day by acknowledging that we are on the land of indigenous people. Traditionally, these lands now referred to as New York State were home to many indigenous nations, including the Lenape, Nanticoke, Powhatan, Lenny, Sand Hill, Manhattan, Delaware, Uncachog, Shinnecock, Montauk, Abenaki, Erie, Neutral, Wyadot, Mohican, Wenro, Huron, and the Hanasani nations of the Mohawk, Onida, Onidaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora, as well as many more nations and peoples. We also respect the treaty rights of indigenous peoples throughout New York and the obligation of the United States and New York government 
as well as American society to adhere to them. We honor the legacy of the many ancestors and elders who made these lands their home and infused it with their spirit for thousands of years. We also honor the original peoples who remain on the ancestral homelands of Turtle Island and who have survived centuries of colonialism, genocide, and land theft. Finally, we honor those who are not here, but who would have been were it not for this history of violence. With hearts and minds on healing and truth, we commit ourselves to advocate for inclusion and restitution for past atrocities. May we all aspire to the world of reconciliation, guided by the example of the Hanasani Confederacy Great Law of Peace, so that our weapons of war are buried forever and that mutual respect and equity prevail among all peoples and nations. Thank you. And now for our invocation. Spirit of life, God, goddess of many names, and one transforming and abundant love, on this World AIDS Day, we lift up people who have died of AIDS, COVID-19, and hate crimes. We lift up people living with HIV and AIDS and are impacted by COVID-19 and hate crimes. We turn our hearts and minds to those who care for and advocate for those affected by HIV and AIDS. Together, we remain dedicated in our collective goal to end the epidemic, reduce new HIV infections, and eliminate HIV and AIDS-related stigma. Let us remember we cannot be of service alone. Together, we are a mighty force for powerful and unrelenting change. And now the people say, Ashe, blessed be a woman and amen. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Dave Choksi, New York City's Health Commissioner, and I'm honored to represent the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene in commemorating World AIDS Day 2021 and acknowledging our progress toward ending the HIV epidemic in New York City. Thank you to the World AIDS Day 2021 Planning Committee for organizing today's eighth annual citywide event. Thank you as well to my colleagues in the Health Department's Bureau of Hepatitis, HIV, and Sexually Transmitted Infections, and to the New York State Department of Health AIDS Institute for supporting the planning efforts. But most of all, thank you, all of you, for joining us this morning. Last year, I noted how living through COVID must have felt like deja vu for many who lived through the early days of HIV and AIDS a dangerous, fast-spreading mystery virus about which our understanding changed by the day. Attempts by otherwise unresponsive leaders to stigmatize and blame specific populations. The need to entirely re-navigate how to express closeness and intimacy. So many terrible echoes of a still vividly remembered past. This year, the year of COVID vaccinations, the analogy is probably closer to the early days of effective HIV drugs and immunotherapies, when hope was emerging alongside an altered set of fears. Fears that only people who were socioeconomically secure would reap the benefits of treatments, that the psychological and mental health effects of the epidemic would linger, that those who were still suffering or who had died would be forgotten that the activism and drive for systemic change would disappear and be replaced by a new normal not much different than what came before. It's the lessons we learned from all of you and the entire community of HIV patients, activists, researchers, practitioners, artists and performers, educators and counselors that make us so conscious of these potential outcomes and so determined not only to avoid them, but to ensure that we never let the lessons of COVID be lost or taken for granted. Our COVID response has already benefited in many ways from our collective response to HIV, from specialized intensive contact tracing and community health outreach to expanded access to early widespread diagnostic testing and immediate linkage to care, treatment and prevention services. Across our response, we have leaned into approaches that are culturally affirming, non-judgmental, and free or low cost, and that emphasize harm reduction, all of which come from our experience with HIV. 
Just as HIV did, COVID strengthened our conviction that meeting the needs of New Yorkers requires us to confront the interlinking issues of systemic racism and social determinants of health, both during and between public health emergencies. And it requires us to build the future of public health now, public health rooted in considerations of intersectionality and structural drivers, public health that demands political will and material investment from our government officials, and public health that centers community participation and leadership, especially from communities most affected. One way we're building that future is with the New York City Public Health Corps, a $235 million investment and a once in a generation opportunity to reimagine what public health can look like in New York City. The community health workers who will be the backbone of our public health core, numbering at least 500 by the end of the year, will link residents to clinical and social services. They will help more people get vaccinated, counsel neighbors about HIV, STIs, and other health issues, including diabetes and depression, and address hunger and food insecurity. Also, under the Public Health Corps umbrella will be about 100 community-based organizations who will serve as the connective tissue for the core within neighborhoods. We look forward to partnering with many of you in this historic, transformative endeavor. Above all, to better confront COVID, HIV, and all public health concerns, we must make racial equity and social justice the main events moving forward, not secondary considerations or something cast to the sidelines. That's why the Department of Health is so deeply proud of the unanimous passing of our Board of Health resolution on racism as a public health crisis last month, and why we insisted on framing it as a resolution not merely a declaration. The document includes concrete plans of action that demonstrate our resolve to hold ourselves accountable for putting anti-racism into practice and to serve as a national model for public health's role in dismantling white supremacy. Again, you paved the way. For decades, the HIV community and its advocates have known, demanded, and fought for the values and practices of a public health system that serves everyone equitably, compassionately, and lovingly. You've had tremendous accomplishments. We'll hear about some of the most recent ones today. And we've had some disappointments, but you never stopped carrying the torch. The darkness of the past two years has revealed to the world just how difficult and courageous a task that has been. As public health leaders, it's our duty and our obligation to carry that torch with and alongside you, relieving each other of the heaviest burdens while growing brighter and stronger together as a community fiercely committed to making the future safer, fairer, and healthier for all. Thank you so much for everything you've done, for everything you do, and for everything we're going to achieve together. Good morning. Thank you to the World AIDS Day Planning Committee for organizing this year's event. It is my honor to be here with you to celebrate our shared accomplishments, describe the health department's vision for a more equitable and healthier city, and commemorate the lives we've lost to HIV. My name is Dr. Celia Quinn. I'm the deputy commissioner for the New York City Health Department's Division of Disease Control, and I'm also the incident commander of our COVID-19 response. While I've only served as deputy commissioner since late August, I've been with the agency since 2014 and have followed our city's HIV work for many years. I have great respect for my colleagues and the community partners who have built such dynamic, forward-thinking programming and services to reduce new HIV infections and improve the health and well-being of so many New Yorkers. I'm excited to share recent activity at the health department designed in part to facilitate these efforts. In July, we changed our organizational structure to improve the ways we work to address viral hepatitis, HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections. This reorganization also meant consolidating our clinic work to help make us more efficient and bring more and better care to New Yorkers. This reorganization presents an opportunity to leverage the expertise and experiences of our colleagues across several program areas and to reimagine the work we do and the way we do it. Our new structure helps us to consider co-occurring diseases, their common drivers, and combined impact, 
allowing us to better understand and respond to New Yorkers' health and experiences related to viral hepatitis, HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections. This means designing and implementing our interventions in ways that take into account the social, economic, and political forces that shape our health and our lives, an approach the HIV community has long practiced. An approach that centers health equity and directly addresses structural racism will be even more important as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic laid bare the tragic disparities in housing, education, food security, and healthcare access, of which the HIV community is all too aware. But it has also shown us the incredible feats we can accomplish with collective action, including the development and dissemination of safe and effective vaccines. The task ahead is seemingly overwhelming, but I know together we can galvanize our communities and government to bring this same commitment to once and for all end the HIV epidemic. So today on World AIDS Day, on behalf of the health department, I thank you for your strength and your lessons, for your trust and partnership. I look forward to the next chapter of our work. Good morning. Thank you for joining this morning's World AIDS Day 2021 citywide event. I'm Dr. Sarah Bronstein, Assistant Commissioner for the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene's Bureau of Hepatitis, HIV, and Sexually Transmitted Infections. It is my distinct honor to share our latest HIV surveillance data showing continued progress toward ending the epidemic in New York City. According to our 2020 HIV surveillance annual report released this morning, 1,396 people were newly diagnosed with HIV in New York City in 2020, down 21% from the number of new HIV diagnoses reported in 2019, and down 76% since 2001 when eight annual HIV reporting began. Men, women, and transgender people, Black, Latino, White, Asian Pacific Islander, and Native American people, all age groups ages 13 years and older, and nearly all transmission groups experienced declines in new HIV diagnoses from 2019 to 2020. In addition to tracking new HIV diagnoses in the city, the health department estimates the number of new HIV infections each year. Estimated new HIV infections in New York City declined 29% from 2016 to 2020, with heterosexual women and men who have sex with men experiencing particularly steep declines of 62% and 48% respectively. It is important to note that these data reflect the impact of COVID-19 and should be interpreted accordingly, particularly in view of how the COVID-19 pandemic affected non-emergency, non-COVID-19 related healthcare services in New York City, including HIV services. COVID-19 traumatized, but it also galvanized. As Commissioner Choksi stated, COVID-19 has created a new sense of urgency to reimagine public health and build a public health system more deeply rooted in social and structural determinants of health, intersectionality, and equity, a system that views and approaches health holistically and draws from basic tenets of social work, social welfare, sociology, ethics, and harm reduction to promote health and well-being in the population, a system that centers community participation and leadership and meets people where they are, a system that prioritizes transparency and accountability over bureaucracy. For the HIV community, these calls for change are not new. Activists have been leading the charge to transform how we approach public health for decades, and their work has served and continues to serve as the foundation of our current efforts. This foundation of activism has been on my mind a lot this year. As many of you know, 40 years ago this past June, the CDC published a report describing five young men who had been treated for pneumocystis carinii pneumonia in three Los Angeles hospitals. One month later, the New York Times reported on cases of a, quote, rare cancer seen in 41 homosexuals. The following spring, it reported on a, quote, new homosexual disorder that was worrying health officials. In September 1982, the CDC used the term AIDS for the first time and released its first case definition for the disease. Over four years since the first cases were reported, and only after countless demonstrations and protests nationwide, in September 1985, President Ronald Reagan publicly mentioned AIDS for the first time in an interview with the Associated Press. By 1985, there were over 16,000 reported cases of AIDS, an 89% increase from the previous year. Public health officials estimated that over half of all people diagnosed with AIDS by that time had died. I mention this to underscore the importance of visibility. Given the shameful history of our government's early response to AIDS, of its willful blindness, it is incumbent on government to insist on visibility. 
to see HIV as a critical issue affecting the public's health, to see people with HIV, to see the systems that create vulnerability to HIV and put prevention, care, and treatment further out of reach for those who need it. It is incumbent on government to see all this and to communicate what we know to the public, to providers, to policymakers, and to our elected officials to secure the support and material investments necessary to end HIV. Achieving visibility is a multi-step collaborative process. First, visibility is achieved through data. The Health Department commits to deepening its efforts to collect, assess, and report the data necessary to shape our response to HIV. We will continue our core HIV surveillance efforts, incorporate new strategies developed during COVID-19 to gather information, and expand our surveillance workforce and focus to assess the holistic needs of people with HIV and the social and structural factors that impact New Yorkers' health and experience. Second, visibility is achieved through community partnership. The Health Department commits to continuing engagement with community partners to deepen our understanding of the local epidemic and New Yorkers' HIV and sexual health needs. In March, we released our New York City 2020 Ending the HIV Epidemic Plan, the product of a nearly year-long community planning process to develop strategies and key activities for the next phase of our Ending the Epidemic efforts. This plan, as well as a community advisory group to be launched in the coming months, will guide efforts to design and implement innovative testing, prevention, care, and treatment initiatives tailored to specific community needs. Third, visibility is achieved through provider partnership. The Health Department commits to continued engagement with providers to build their capacity to provide affirming, patient-centered HIV and sexual health care. We recently launched a new provider education campaign promoting immediate initiation of HIV treatment. And earlier this year, we awarded funding to five organizations to adapt evidence-informed HIV care models to support communities most affected by HIV. In August, we announced our PlaySure Network 2.0 initiative, which will support healthcare and supportive service agencies to deliver a comprehensive health package of HIV prevention services using an equity, client-centered, one-stop shop model. Six years ago today, at the World AIDS Day 2015 citywide event, Mayor de Blasio stood on stage at the Apollo Theater in Harlem and announced the New York City Ending the Epidemic Plan a multi-million dollar annual investment to reduce the number of new HIV infections to non-epidemic levels and improve the health and well-being of New Yorkers with HIV. That announcement signaled a radical shift in our jurisdictional approach to HIV. And we asked you then to partner with us and to trust us. We are so grateful that you did. Today, we are asking for your continued trust and partnership as we enter the next phase of our efforts to end the epidemic. We commit to being the kind of government agency that listens and responds, the kind that is driven by science, is guided by community, and is progressive and compassionate, the kind of government agency that is committed to visibility. It is now my honor, a genuine honor, to present World AIDS Day 2021 awards to the following organizations that exemplified this year's World AIDS Day theme building health equity and resilience in the face of two pandemics. Argus Community. Argus Community has provided holistic mental health, substance use, housing, education, and case management services to people in the Bronx for over 50 years to improve health outcomes for the communities they serve. Caribbean Equality Project. The Caribbean Equality Project is a community-based organization that empowers, advocates for, and represents black and brown, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender non-conforming, and queer Caribbean immigrants in New York City. Through public education, community organizing, civic engagement, storytelling, and cultural and social programming, the organization's work focuses on advocacy for LGBTQ and immigrant rights, gender equity, racial justice, immigration and mental health services, and ending hate violence in the Caribbean diaspora. Children's Aid. Children's Aid was founded in 1853 to help children in poverty succeed and thrive. They provide comprehensive supports to children, youth, and their families in targeted, high-needs New York City neighborhoods. Consulate General of Mexico in New York. 
The Mexican consulate continued to serve the community throughout the COVID-19 public health emergency by providing culturally competent services and programming. La Ventanilla de Salud, the health program of the Mexican consulate, is focused on facilitating access to health services and cultivating a culture of prevention, information, and participation in healthcare for Mexican immigrants. Hudson Valley Community Services. A small group of volunteers in Westchester County founded Hudson Valley Community Services in 1983 with assistance from the New York State Department of Health AIDS Institute in response to the burgeoning AIDS crisis. Their emergency financial services program provides one-time or short-term payments to assist eligible people with HIV with emergent needs to pay for essential utilities, housing, food, transportation, medication, and other emergency expenses. Please join me in congratulating these organizations as World AIDS Day 2021 award recipients. Congratulations. Greetings on World AIDS Day. On my first day as New York State Health Commissioner, it is my great pleasure to send greetings for New York World AIDS Day virtual event. Today's event is part of the State Department of Health 2021, ending the Epidemic Summit. I am truly honored that Governor Hochul has given me the opportunity to serve. Today, I want to reflect on the ways that epidemics show us who we are. Those of you who lived through the early days of HIV AIDS know this to be true. The AIDS epidemic showed how homophobia and racism cost lives, and it showed how solidarity and activism can save lives. We are forever indebted to the AIDS activists who fighting for their lives changed the way researchers interacted with their subjects. They showed how letting people in the room who were living with HIV made for better science, better treatment programs. We are also indebted to activists for syringe exchange programs, which greatly reduced the risk of HIV among people who inject drugs and gave rise to the notion of harm reduction, which remains so important to this day. So when we celebrate World AIDS Day, we are celebrating a legacy of activism. People who've lived with HIV AIDS epidemic recognize how the COVID pandemic pulled back the curtain on the enduring racial ethnic inequities in our society. Like HIV to this day, COVID disproportionately affects Black, Latinx, and Indigenous people, not because being Black or Latinx, it means that we are innately more vulnerable. We are witnessing the ways in which a person's race ethnicity affects their life chances and their ability to stay safe. We are seeing who we are a society that remains deeply divided by race. And once again, we must say this isn't right. And the best thing is it doesn't have to be this way. These are inequities, not in our genes, and we can change the unfair odds. Maybe we'll have a vaccine against HIV, maybe we won't, but we have the capacity to end AIDS whether we get an HIV vaccine or not. Isn't that incredible? Powerful antiretroviral drugs are key, but never forget the importance of activism and solidarity. We need this solidarity now. The COVID-19 pandemic has been tremendously harmful and its health effects extend beyond the direct effects of COVID. I suspect COVID's impact is seen also in HIV diagnoses and treatment and in care. The 2020 numbers are affected by the pandemic, and so are the lives of people living with HIV. 2020 was a tough year for each of us, but whatever the 2020 numbers are, the right number is zero. Zero HIV deaths, zero HIV infections. I thank you all for the work that you do and will continue to do to get us there. We will end the epidemic. We will do it by being more inclusive with more solidarity and continued action. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for the invitation to join all of you today. I look forward to this event every single year. I look forward to seeing all of you. I, I As everyone else does, I wish we were in person. So maybe next year, I'm knocking on wood. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Joanne Warren. I'm the Deputy Director for Community Health and the Director of the New York State Department of Health AIDS Institute. For those of you who joined us last year, you'll recall that we cautiously applauded the milestone of bending the curve. Uh, this was one of our key uh, metrics to show that truly we had achieved our intentions by the end of 2020. Um, in fact, we were able to bend the curve uh, in 2019, achieving the first ever decrease in HIV prevalence in New York State. Bending the curve occurs when the annual number of estimated new HIV infections is lower than the annual number of deaths among persons who are living with diagnosed HIV. Due to the historic robust state response to the epidemic, as well as our ambitious community-driven ending the epidemic campaign, New York State has bent the curve before 2020 and well before estimated HIV incidents reached 750. The number originally outlined as a benchmark in the ending the epidemic blueprint. However, while I certainly want to point to those successes, I think that we have to point to the amazing challenges that we've experienced over the last year and a half. When we started conversations of ending the epidemic and we look to the end of 2020 as, as sort of our milestone year, our, our critical year in our establishing our goals, we had no idea what 2020 would look like. And as we all know, 2020 was not just another year. While COVID-19 has brought increased attention to the field of public health and the important work that so many of these programs, your programs, yourselves have accomplished, it also has impacted many of our community-based efforts, our organizations, and challenged our continued progress on ending the epidemic metrics. The limited availability and accessibility to services, the changes in overall behaviors uh, with the intention of maintaining safety and good health uh, certainly impacted our surveillance and, and our programmatic outcomes. The theme for this year, building health equity and resilience is absolutely essential to how we think about moving forward. I read recently that resiliency is bouncing back from a difficult experience. However, it is not the same as being impervious to stress and it's the capacity to recover and adapt after a stressful situation. Many of our programs, many of you have shown what true resiliency looks like in order to continue to build upon these successes and the successes that we've achieved through this entire movement of ending the epidemic and doing so even in the face of challenges, what we need to do is remain persistent and may remain focused on developing unique and collaborative partnerships across all sectors, continuing to keep our impacted communities as the key informants with the lived experience and the understanding in our decision-making processes. Admittedly, 2020 looked very different than what we had anticipated. And our reflection on our 2020 data needs continued assessment. So while we see achievements, we have to ensure that the information that we have and the data and the surveillance uh, information continues to be analyzed. We need to be confident in our understanding of the impact of COVID-19 to our goals established through ending the epidemic. We need to acknowledge where we have continued to succeed and certainly speak to the areas where we have to continue to focus. The disparities remain. We committed on the first day of talking about ending an epidemic, that we would leave no community behind. And so as we continue to move forward in our efforts of ending the epidemic, we have to recommit 
to ensure health equity, social justice, and the opportunity for every single member of New York State to have access to care, to screening, to treatment, and to prevention. In closing, I ask that you continue to stand strong, to be resilient, and to move forward with us to achieve our shared visions and goals for New York State. COVID-19 gave us a reason and a challenge to pause. But as we continue to move forward, we have the opportunity to achieve all the goals that we have set our eyes on. I thank you again for including me. I take this final moment to reflect on those we have loved and those we have lost. I bring to mind our colleague, our friend, our brother, Jason Ward, and all others who we have lost. In their memory and on the shoulders we stand, let's show that we are ready to move forward. As a network, as a community, and as a state. Please, I wish for all of you good health. I thank you for all that you do. And I'm honored to stand with you again as we continue to move forward into our next year. We will end this epidemic in New York State. And we will continue to be a model across this globe. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm the founder of Blitz Inc. Blitz Gays and Lesbians Living in a Transgender Society. I'm supposed to send you words of encouragement through a pandemic and resilience and sustainability. That's supposed to be my message. But on Thursday, November the 11th, my best friend Harold C. Dent passed away after a 40 year battle with HIV. Harold was my dearest and very best friend that always told me to push forward, always be strong. Throughout a whole pandemic, Harold showed the resilience and gave me the strength to not only be sustainable, but help other people be sustainable. At Glitz Inc., we're creating what's never been done before in a way that humanity sees this community, the Black trans community, the TLGBQIA and BIPOC community in ways they have never seen us recognize us. This World AIDS Day, I want you to cherish yourself, love yourself. If you're a leader, self-care is important. If you're someone going through It'll be okay. Have the resilience to have the power to do the right thing so you can live and sustain. Again, I'm Kyan Durashell, and I love you. Even if you've never met me, I love you. Hello, my name is Bishop Stacy Latimer. I am the founder and spiritual leader of Love Alive International Sanctuary of Praise right here in New York City. And I am humbled and honored to light the blue candle, symbolizing light in the midst of dark times in the AIDS crisis during this 2021 World AIDS Day event. I light this candle hoping that each of us will be reminded why our individual contributions are so important in the fight against HIV and AIDS. This candle also is a symbol of hope. Hope brings light into the darkness that we might thrive, not just survive. As I light this candle, 
Please join me in a moment of silence in memory of loved ones lost in this AIDS crisis. Let us remember. And as we remember, may we honor their memories by renewing our commitment to fighting AIDS until there is a cure. On behalf of the 2021 World AIDS Day Committee, I thank each of you for your contributions to ending the AIDS epidemic, both here in New York and all around the world. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Medina Matsuki, Director of HIV Social Marketing and Community Engagement for the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene's Bureau of Hepatitis, HIV, and Sexually Transmitted Infections. I'm also a proud member of the World AIDS Day 2021 Citywide Event Planning Committee. It's my distinct honor today to share a few words acknowledging community and government leadership that helped to make this morning's event possible. In 1983, Two years after the first report of what we come to know as AIDS, activists took the stage at the National Lesbian and Gay Health Conference in Denver, Colorado to demand recognition, not as victims or patients, but as people with AIDS. They were protesting the lack of government response to the AIDS epidemic, which by the year's end would claim the lives of nearly 1,300 people. The activist statements, which we know as the Denver Principles, set forth a series of recommendations and a list of rights of people with AIDS. These recommendations and rights still guide our work as we continue to fight sexism, homophobia, racism, transphobia, and other systems of oppression that create and exacerbate HIV-related health inequalities. But two of the recommendations for people with AIDS particularly resonate today as we gather to commemorate World AIDS Day. First, form caucuses to choose your own representatives, to deal with the media, to choose your own agenda, and to plan your own strategies. And second, be included in all AIDS forums with equal credibility as other participants to share their own experiences and knowledge. I am proud to be part of the New York City Health Department, which takes these recommendations to heart and insists on censoring community voices not only in organizing events like this one, but in our broader HIV program policy and planning. I'm proud that so many of our elected officials have stepped up, especially in recent years, to champion these efforts and secure needed investments. And I'm even prouder to be part of the HIV community, which inspires me every day with its compassion, its tenacity, its insistence on government accountability, and its ability to affect real change. So on behalf of the World AIDS Day 2021 Planning Committee, thank you. Gracias. Thank you to New York City and New York State Health Department leadership. Thank you to our local and state elected officials. Thank you to our HIV service providers and community-based organizations. And thank you to the community. Thank you for standing together in fellowship and solidarity. Palante. Hello, I'm Harold Phillips, Director of the White House Office of National AIDS Policy. I'm sorry that I can't be with you this World AIDS Day to help you in your community commemorations, but those commemorations are so important as we recommit and rededicate ourselves to ending the HIV epidemic. This year's World AIDS Day theme, Ending the HIV Epidemic, Equitable Access, Everyone's Voice, underpins our commitment to ending the HIV epidemic everywhere. Equity in access, meaningful engagement, and collaboration across all sectors and levels of government and society. Our commitment to ending the HIV epidemic everywhere means that we must innovate our approaches and invest in communities and populations to end the HIV epidemic 
through strategic and thoughtful planning and programs that address health equity. Also, expanding access and ensuring the voices of people with HIV and people with lived experiences are central in all of our work. Equity in access means that our efforts are informed by voices from the most impacted communities, where we need to work to put equity at the center of the response. And additionally, we need to work to strive to ensure equity in our programs, research, policies, and planning. There's still much work ahead to achieve equitable, equitable access to HIV prevention, care, and treatment in every community, particularly for communities of color, adolescent girls and young women, especially Black adolescent girls and young women, the LGBTQ plus community, and other key affected populations. Meaningful engagement, means that community and civil society engagement, which we have known for years, is vital to ending the HIV epidemic everywhere. The Ending the HIV Epidemic in the U.S. initiative continues to implement community-driven solutions by addressing racial, ethnic, and geographic disparities that continue to impact people's lives. Globally, the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief works with partner countries, multilateral organizations, community and faith-based organizations and other critical stakeholders to deliver quality, people-centered HIV prevention and treatment services. Together with private and public entities, we will explore new and innovative ways to partner with communities and leverage the experiences of individuals living with HIV to help end this epidemic in our domestic US response. Collaboration across all sectors and levels of government means no single entity can end the HIV epidemic. Protecting and further expanding HIV progress requires a sustained commitment from all of our sectors of society using a whole of government approach around the world and working together that we will leverage our respective advantages and strengths to ensure that HIV services are available and that we continue to provide access to people of every age, gender, and population group in the United States and around the world. The Biden-Harris administration is committed to ending the HIV epidemic in the U.S., and we will continue to try and support our communities as we work together collectively using the National HIV AIDS Strategy, which was released today, as part of this effort. So, as we commemorate World AIDS Day in 2021. Let's use the passion and commitment from this day to carry us forward toward an end of the HIV epidemic. Thank you. Hello everyone. Hola a todas, todos y todes. My name is Luciano Reverte and I'm the Director of Community Engagement at Latino Commission on AIDS and Oasis Wellness Center. This year, World AIDS Day focused on building health equity and resilience in the face of two pandemics. This year event was wonderfully inspiring, and I want to take this opportunity to thank our co-hosts, the Alliance of Positive Change, Callen Lord Community Health Center, GMAC, HIV Center of Clinical and Behavioral Studies at the New York State Psychiatric Institute of Columbia University, Housing Works, Iris House, Latino Commission on AIDS, New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and New York State Department of Health, ACE Institute. I also want to thank the World AIDS Day Planning Committee, the guest speakers, including people living with HIV and AIDS, local leadership from HIV AIDS Service Organization, and the leadership of the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and the New York State Department of Health, ACE Institute. The staff, from the New York State Ending the Epidemic Summit, staff to support us in communication, design, video editing, and related tasks, and of course, to all of you who join us today. Quiero agradecerles a las organizaciones que apoyaron este evento, al Cuerpo de Planificación, 
a nuestros invitados especiales, a nuestro equipo de comunicación, diseño y video, y especialmente a todas las personas que se sumaron hoy de modo virtual. Para ustedes, muchas gracias. Enjoy the rest of the New York State ending the Epidemic Summit. We hope you will be inspired to continue our collective work. Disfruten el resto de la conferencia. Thank you so much, everyone. Muchas gracias.